Okay, so now we're getting to a point where we're going to start using some real-world numbers. And at this point in time, I expect you to use a calculator. I would never do these by hand. Um, these are smaller data sets, which we could do by hand, um, but they're, they're bad numbers. It's never going to be good. I want you to straight up use your calculator on all of these applied problems. There's going to be a problem on the test where I ask you to do it by hand, but there is also problems where I'm perfectly fine with you using a calculator and the standard deviation feature on your calculator. So you have to be comfortable using your calculator and finding the standard deviation. If you're not using my calculator, the TI-30XS, for this uh, test, you definitely need to Google how do you find standard deviation on your calculator. And if you can't find standard deviation on your calculator, you're going to want to find a different uh, device to use. Okay, so let's read this. It says, in the next section, we use standard deviation to determine which companies produces batteries that are more consistent with regard to their life expectancy. So again, we're going to a real-world example. In a real-world example, the majority of real-world examples, you want small distributions. You want everything really accurate, everything really close to that mean. So a small distribution means a small standard deviation. So if someone told you I have a standard deviation of 10 versus a standard deviation of 1, for this example, we're looking for the standard deviation of 1. We want it to be really small, really close, okay? So let's look at this. It says a consumer group has tested a sample of eight size D batteries from each of three companies. The results of tests are in the following table. According to these tests, which company produces batteries for which the values representing the hours of constant use have the smallest standard deviation. So there's a couple of things that we need to know about this. We're testing more than one company. We're finding more than one standard deviation. But the big thing that I want you to realize is we can't test every single D battery. We have to test a sample of D batteries. So what does that tell us if we're using the sample? That tells us that we're going to be dividing by n minus 1 if we were doing this by hand. But more importantly in our calculator we're going to be looking for s of x, the sample standard deviation, rather than sigma x, the population standard deviation. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, well, this part, I'm not going to be able to really show you that much. I, I need you to put these into your calculators. I want you to, to note these things right down here. I'm going to have you note the quantity, the average for each, and then I want you to notice the sample standard deviation for each. So those are the three things that I want to know, and I'm going to do it for ever so bright. I'm going to do it for dependable. And I'm going to do it for beacons. So when you see a 6.2 here, that means that battery lasted 6.2 hours. Then there's 6.4 hours. So we're looking at which of these batteries is more consistent. Okay. So one thing that I do notice is there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 entries for each one of these. So it has the same quantity that we've tested, which is good. So go ahead and put each one of these into your calculator. Again, you're hitting data, clearing out the list entering the data, you hit second data for stat, you hit one variable statistics, one var stats, one variable statistics is what it stands for, you hit enter, make sure you're on L1 for your data and 1 for your frequency, and then hit enter for calc, and then write down 1, 2, and 3. One is how many things there are, 2 is the mean, and 3 is the sample standard deviation. Again, we're using the sample standard deviation because if you read the problem, this is a sample of batteries, not the entire set of batteries. So do that now and let's see what you get. When I did ever so bright, I ended up with an average of 7, and then it looks like I'm getting a sample standard deviation of 1.33, and this does have units here, this is 1.33 hours. So I'll do an HR right there for hours, okay? Now go ahead and do dependable. Looks like I'm also getting an average of 7, so the same average amount of time, but I'm getting a sample standard deviation of 0 0.72. 0 0.72 hours if I round to two decimals. Please double check my math on that. And then I'm looking at beacon. Put beacon into your calculator run those one var stats, I'm getting again an average of seven hours, and I'm getting a sample standard deviation of 0 0.88 hours. So if someone says, on average, my batteries last seven hours, well, that's great. What if you're in a life 
life-threatening situation. Like maybe you're going on a hike and you know that you need batteries to potentially, if you get stuck, you know you can make it out in seven hours. Well, each one of these batteries says it'll last seven hours, but the question is which one of these batteries is more accurate in how long it lasts. So the one that's more accurate is the one that's more consistent. More consistent means a smaller standard deviation. Well, looking at these standard deviations, 0.72 is the smallest standard deviation. Smallest, in this case, means the most accurate. Okay, smallest in this case means the more accurate. So which battery company am I choosing? I'm gonna be choosing Dependable. Nice name, Dependable Batteries. Okay, so every single one of these is on the same playing field when it comes to the average length of the batteries. If one of their batteries average length was 10, that's probably the one I'd go with. But since all the averages are the same, I'm going to look for accuracy, the smallest standard deviation. Let's go ahead and repeat this idea in the next problem. It says a consumer testing agency has tested the strengths of three brands of eighth inch uh, rope. The results of the tests are shown in the following table. According to the sample tests, which company produces eighth inch rope for which the breaking point has the smallest standard deviation? So this is huge. Imagine if your life is lying on the ability of this rope to hold your weight or whatever that rope is holding, okay? Um, you cannot have that rope break. So for instance, if they say it's going to weigh or hold 120 pounds, it better hold 120 pounds and not break before that. So you gotta be really, really careful with these results. When, when someone says this is what it's certified to do, you have to be accurate. So what do they do to make sure it's accurate? They do a random sampling and testing. And that's exactly what they've done here. So they've tested the break point and these are all weights in pounds. So you see that number 122, that's in pounds. Okay. So what are we doing again? I want you to put in in, well, first of all, you got to realize that this is a sample because this is a test of random ones. It is a sample test. So that tells us we're gonna be using S of X instead of Sigma X. It is just a sample of data. Again, I'm gonna put all three of these into my calculator using that data feature. I want you to mark down three things. I want you to mark down how many things there were, what was the average, and what was the sample standard deviation for each of them. So there's trustworthy, brand X, and there's never snap. Let's see what we get when we put those into our calculator. Please do so now. So every single one of these seems that I have seven items. And after you do them, I'm getting an average of each one of them holds, has the same average. Each one of them holds on average 130 pounds, but I am getting different standard deviations. So the first standard deviation I got was 17.09. And again, this is pounds, so LB for pounds. The next standard deviation I got was 22.63 pounds. And the last one I got was 9.93 pounds. Please double check my math on all those. You're gonna be putting those into uh, your calculator, to the data feature of your calculator, see what you get. But again here, what does this mean? It means on average, it holds about 130 pounds. You can trust it within plus or minus that standard deviation. So for instance, that first one, you can trust it up to about 147 pounds down to about 100 and, well, let's say about 113 pounds. I'm just doing some rough estimates there, okay? So most of their ropes would go between 113 pounds and 147 pounds. Of course, in this example, if it was a rope and I'm presuming it's holding something very important, I would err on the side of caution. So I would always um, rate it at the lowest of the ones that were tested. But that's not what this problem asks for. This problem asks for which one is most accurate. They all have the same average, so they all are on an even field when it comes to how much weight should it hold, but there is a huge difference in the standard deviations. 9.93 is the smallest here, and again, the smallest standard deviation here means the most accurate. Okay, so which one am I choosing? I'm choosing Never Snap. That's going to be my most accurate rope. You're always picking the one, well, in these cases, you're picking the one with the smallest standard deviation. Small standard deviation means more accuracy.